Welcome back to Will's Recap. Today we have a riveting treat in store for you with the war drama film Battalion, a gripping tale based on true events. As we delve into this cinematic journey, we shine a spotlight on the remarkable contributions of Russian women during times of conflict. Their courage, resilience, and unwavering commitment prove that they stand shoulder to shoulder with their male counterparts in the battlefield. Without further ado, let's dive into the action-packed world of Battalion. In the spring of 1917, Russia was recovering from the February Revolution, which saw the monarchy replaced by a temporary government. Nikolai, a military officer, had recently arrived in St. Petersburg from the front lines after being moved. He travels in a horse-drawn carriage and instructs the driver to take him somewhere. Along the journey, the driver updates him about the current chaotic situation in the capital. Meanwhile, a singer named Nadia is rehearsing with her mother when suddenly, their maid Frosca rushes over and eagerly hands her a letter. Nadia opens it with excitement, and a blue medallion falls out. She quickly reads the contents silently and instantly. Shortly after learning that Nadia's fiancé Petya died in battle, her friend Vera enters the room. Upon hearing the news about Petya, Vera announces to everyone present that she'll be joining the newly formed Bochkavera Women's Battalion, then swiftly departs. Motivated by a desire for revenge, Nadia informs her mother that she'll also enlist and hurries after Vera. Surprised and worried by her daughter's decision, Nadia's mother offers their maid Frosca jewelry and money to persuade Nadia to return. Meanwhile, Nikolai arrives at the Russian army's headquarters, where the generals, including the leader Kerensky, strategize to counter the German advance. One of the generals informs the committee that none of the soldiers are ready for combat. He then shows a video revealing that many regiments on the front lines are refusing to fight. In the footage, soldiers are seen fraternizing with the enemy as the Germans try to persuade them to rebel by offering alcohol and food rations. Kerensky becomes frustrated and orders the video to be stopped. Some committee members suggest reinstating the death penalty, but Kerensky proposes a risky alternative, a bold propaganda tactic. He explains that he has created the Bochkavera Battalion to boost morale and inspire everyone to fight. Consequently, conscription begins, and women from various backgrounds, cultures, and social classes line up for enlistment and medical exams. One of the applicants, Evdokia, surprises her lover, Alexei, by signing up for enlistment. Worried about her safety, Alexei attempts to dissuade her, but she remains determined. Later, another applicant named Dusia is rejected by Nikolai due to her weight. In a bid to impress and qualify for enlistment, Dusia demonstrates her strength by bending a steel fire poker with her bare hands. Unaware that the battalion commander, Maria Bochkarova, is observing, Dusia's display earns her the position of Maria's deputy, and she is instructed to continue with the enlistment process. Subsequently, Maria meets a general outside the building, who offers his daughter, Natalia Tatisheva, to join the regiment in the absence of a son. Without hesitation, Maria welcomes the enthusiastic young woman into the fold. Before official training begins, the ladies are required to have their hair cut short. Some of the applicants are unable to bear the idea of losing their long hair and decide to quit. However, many of the determined individuals brace themselves and proceed with the haircut. Following the mass haircut, the recruits are trained to maintain proper formation while their commander, Maria, addresses them. Galina, another recruit, causes a disturbance at the barracks by being a bully. When Galina attempts to harm Evdokia, Natalia intervenes to stop her. Vera asks Dusia to maintain order, but the large woman aligns herself with Galina after being promised the best bed spot. Dusia attempts to abuse her authority, unaware that Maria is nearby overhearing everything. After hearing the situation, Maria agrees to allow them to switch beds, but decides to transfer the deputy position to Natalia. The following day, the women begin their training bright and early. They jog for kilometers until they reach a downhill slope. Initially hesitant, they eventually proceed forward due to limited options. While descending, many lose their balance and stumble. Later, they arrive at the beach to complete various obstacle courses. Additionally, they receive instruction on firing a gun, recognizing gas attack signs and tapping into their inner strength. Maria then instructs Galina and Natalia to step forward and orders Galina to spar with each other. <clears throat> Initially hesitant, Natalia eventually retaliates against Galina after enduring a few blows. In response, Maria instructs everyone to engage in combat, leading to a chaotic brawl. One day, a recruit with a keen sense of smell predicts that they'll have beef for lunch, 
and she turns out to be correct. While eating, Galena requests a private conversation with the commander. Intrigued, Maria agrees and they step aside. Suddenly, Galena shouts loud enough for everyone to hear that Evdokia sneaks out every night to meet with the boys. Disappointed by Galena's betrayal of her fellow recruit, Maria punches her in the face and orders her to leave. On a different occasion, Nadia's mother speaks with Maria in an attempt to withdraw her daughter from military training. She hands the commander a letter and explains that Nadia is a singer who has been offered opportunities to travel and perform abroad. Additionally, she reveals that she had paid Frasca to look after Nadia. Later, Nadia and Frasca are summoned to the commander's office. After the truth comes out, Frasca rushes out of the room in embarrassment. Later, a truck arrives and an officer informs Maria that she is under arrest without specifying the reasons. Nikolai, Alexei, and the recruits can only watch as their commander is taken away. Subsequently, the general reveals to Maria that she is being arrested for hitting a subordinate. In the background, Galena, along with a few officers, reports the incident and proposes resolving the matter by forming a military committee led by Galena. In response, Maria defiantly spits on her hand and gestures at the accusers. Enraged, the general decides to disband the battalion, demote Maria, and imprison her. Meanwhile, the Bochkareva battalion gathers outside the headquarters. As Maria's deputy, Natalia barges into the general's office and tries to persuade him to release Maria. She argues that everyone in the battalion is part of the decision-making process, so there's no need for a committee, and Maria should be freed. Despite being rejected by the general, Natalia returns to the formation and awaits the outcome. Determined to secure their commander's release, the women remain in formation throughout the night, even after the general leaves. The following morning, when the general returns to the headquarters, he finds the ladies still standing steadfastly in formation. Impressed by their loyalty and determination, the general rescinds Maria's punishment. Later that evening, it becomes known that Natalia is pregnant. Maria orders the entire battalion to assemble so she can formally transfer the deputy responsibility to Vera and send Natalia home. The following day, during the obstacle course, Maria, accompanied by the general, briefs the regiment that they will face a rigorous test where failure by one means failure for all. After months of preparation, everyone gives their best effort to overcome each obstacle. However, trouble arises when Nadia falls short on a jump, resulting in her breaking her ankles. Vera and Frasca refuse to leave Nadia's side and assist her throughout the course, but their help causes them to be late, much to Maria's disappointment. Meanwhile, the general admires their commitment to never leaving a fellow soldier behind. He announces that the entire battalion has passed the test and will be integrated into the regular army. Shortly afterward, the battalion is deployed to the front lines. At the train station, Nadia spots her fiancé, Petya, injured and unconscious. She leaves the blue medallion beside him and boards the train. During a break from their march, soldiers from another regiment approach to catch a glimpse of the all-female battalion and perhaps engage in conversation. Acting swiftly, Maria commands everyone to assume a defensive formation. She then confronts the men assertively. Fortunately, a few soldiers recognized Maria as a former comrade who had saved their lives years earlier. This recognition earned the respect of the male soldiers, and they departed without causing trouble. As they neared the front lines, Maria encountered a demoralized colonel who confessed his inability to control his men, who had lost their will to fight. Upon reaching the trenches, the soldiers settled in and took stock of their positions and weapons. It wasn't long before two German soldiers approached, offering bribes of food and alcohol. However, the female soldiers remained loyal to their cause. They held the Germans at gunpoint, and when the Germans retaliated, they killed one and captured the other. Evdokia and another soldier were tasked with escorting the captured German prisoner. As they crossed a trench, the other soldier fell, leaving Evdokia alone to escort the prisoner. Underestimating the German who feigned friendliness, Evdokia was caught off guard. In the forest, the German seized the opportunity to choke Evdokia to death. She became the first casualty of the Bochkareva crew, and her death deeply affected everyone, especially her lover Alexei. A month later, the Germans bombarded the Russian trenches with mustard gas. The women quickly sprang into action, donning gas masks and fortifying their positions. In the chaos, Frosca forgot to grab a gas mask for herself and tragically suffocated and died within minutes. Despite the loss, Maria ordered her troops to retaliate, 
and the two armies engaged in close quarters combat in the middle of the battlefield. Despite significant Russian casualties, they managed to overpower the Germans and force them to retreat. After the battle, Maria seeks assistance from the colonel, but he refuses, claiming that his troops are criminals and traitors who won't obey his orders. Seeing the shame on the colonel's face, Maria decides not to pursue the matter further. On the way back to the front lines, male soldiers confront Maria, blaming her for the trouble they faced. They bring Maria face to face with her husband, who, after a brief exchange, violently assaults her. Though she tries to defend herself, the man's superior strength overwhelms her. Despite the commotion, the colonel ignores the situation. Eventually, Maria manages to recover from her ordeal and returns to her unit, struggling but determined. Back at headquarters, the higher-ups analyze the videos captured from the front lines. Russian Colonel Leonidovich observes that it's clear that no regiment besides the Bochkareva Battalion is willing to take action. Meanwhile, Petya accidentally drops the tea he is serving when he spots his fiancée in the video causing a stir. After the meeting, Petya requests permission from Leonidovich to join the front lines, to which Leonidovich responds by announcing his own decision to go as well. At the front lines, the women hold a prayer ceremony, fully aware that without support for their advance, many of them may not survive the night. Each soldier holds a candle and offers prayers as the Russians advance toward the German positions under the cover of darkness. Maria instructs Vera to lead the charge once she gives the signal. Soon enough, Maria ignites dried hay to signal the attack. The Russian troops swiftly charge at the uns- Surprise. Near the front lines, the colonel is awakened by the sound of gunfire. He asks his aide about the commotion, and the aide informs him that the Bochkareva battalion initiated the attack at midnight. Fierce close-quarter combat erupts in the trenches. Both sides sustained heavy casualties, but the Russians successfully drove back the Germans to their original positions. In the midst of the chaos, Dusia seizes a machine gun and unleashes a relentless assault on the enemy, effectively clearing the way for her comrades by taking down numerous German soldiers. On the opposing side, the charge but tragically gets hit in the neck, resulting in instant death. After the intense battle, the troops assemble, and Maria acknowledges Dusia's bravery and contributions by presenting her with her personal watch as a reward. They are satisfied with their achievement, recognizing it as a success that even their counterparts in the Russian army couldn't accomplish. Maria then instructs her deputy and Nadia to seek assistance from the male troops once again, but none of them step forward to volunteer. However, Colonel Leonidovich and Petya later arrive and offer to join the frontline fight. The male soldiers intervene, holding Leonidovich and the other officers at gunpoint insisting that officers should not engage in combat. Consequently, Leonidovich and the other officers are stripped of their epaulets. As Maria feared, the Germans launched a counterattack to retake the position. Another intense firefight breaks out. Tragically, Nikolai loses his life while operating the machine gun, and Vera is fatally wounded when she attempts to take over. The women find themselves cornered in a dead end, surrounded by the Germans. With no way out and few alternatives, they say their final prayers. Fortunately, the prayers of the courageous Bochkareva members are answered when they hear a multitude of footsteps approaching their position. To their relief, they discover that the officers are leading the charge by example, and the male troops, who had previously been hesitant, have a change of heart and join in to reinforce the women. Numerous nations exhibit strong patriarchal tendencies and resist the notion of women participating in combat roles. What are your perspectives on the inclusion of women in combat operations? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.